Hello. Just want to make a quick video for the song creator. The last update I did was 11.6. The newest version I have is 11.21. I wrote a small little change log. So on my GitHub, I can see Let's see, between 11.21, well, I only actually pushed 11.20. I get to push 11.21, but when I compare 11.20 and 11.6, I see 23 commits, nine files changed. 1,200 additions, 300 deletions. So I wrote this basic uh, description of the change log here. So here's the current version. I added slides. I added ghosts. GUI option to enable or disable. I'll demonstrate that later. I added or improved open string support. Um, last time it, last time I showed the video eleven six, it was only choosing the open string if the chosen frets currently focused on were zero one two three. But the update, if I if I check this off on lead, I'll get the open string even though it's focused on seven to ten. Whatever the four focus frets area are, doesn't matter as long as if the if the open string is inside the scale. Next, I added time signature customization. Lots to go over here. You could have up to four custom time signatures right now. Set the enumerator, then the denominator, or you could randomize it. So right now the default setting is just four to four. There's these other configurations. Every X measures all, all meaning all measures will be four, four. Uh, sequential. So let me, I have to demo this too, but um, there's also this transition I could get into. I'll come back to that, all this time signature stuff. Let's go over the change log. I improved priority notation calculation for length of notes to place. So last time I had a while loop inside of a for loop. Oh no, no, actually I had a for loop inside of a while loop. So a while note of length doesn't equal the time signature, which was four, but now it'd be whatever, whatever you pass through here. But um, I know you're not seeing the source code, but the priority the old version, I noticed that I wrote it in a way like, so the priority works, it chooses a random min max, and then it deducts by, so min, random mix min, random max, or there'll be a random number between the min and max, I mean, and then it'll remove this number, this third one. But I noticed that the way I, the way I wrote it, so once the this priority goes to zero, it'll reset. But I noticed some of these would have like super low, like five priority, and then one of them would have six priority. And then that one with six would always be chosen. So I changed it so that instead of each time a priority goes to zero, instead of it always resetting, it's been updated to wait until every priority has re reached zero and then everything gets reset. So it's more equally balanced priority. But uh, I do have a wish list to have a rhythm priority be separate because this priority affects all three arrangements right now. Next, random priority. Yeah, it's, that's fun to experiment with. Because the default priority, when you start loading, 
settings. Just to load the app, because there's good settings I found. Let me start it and stop it. Stop and start it. I like the priority, I like having a little less priority on eights, up to 80, 85 max. A little less priority on whole note, 30 max. Um, 30%. It's a lot of calculations going on. But uh, let's see what else. Improved error handling. Um, how else can I say? I uh, There was, I noticed, there's one part I know that can still hang. It's the part of determining the length of notes, adding the priority of notes to equal the length of the time signature. So I improved it to, to uh, error less and follow through more. But there's still some improvements to make because you can have some extremely strange uh, decimal time signatures that perhaps a 30 second note may help, but I don't have 30 second notes. So it's like all these little calculations. But um, let's go to the next one. This line right here, automated and disabled alternative calculation for determining when to move up or down focus frets. It's basically saying 11.6 version, I had calculation for determining if I should move up my first. Because right the way I wrote this, it focuses on four frets at a time. And then it. It's a four-dimensional array showing four focus frets. So after every X number of notes, I have set 11.6 was set to four. Now it's set to six to default. And when that note length is equal to a quarter note or more, good enough length of time, I consider to move to focus frets. But um, so I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, the focus frets. So, they, um, so yeah, focus is on four frets at a time, and then after X amount of notes, it de determines to move up or down. So this calculation I was talking about right here, the 11.6 version, it was a 50-50 chance to move up the fretboard or move down. It's just a simple random 1 through 100 number is equals to 50 plus true. Uh, I tried to experiment where it would calculate the current fretboard based on the max fret, and then it would be like, okay, if you're like at a certain distance away from the max, then you'll have higher chances of incrementing. But I ended up disabling that. I went back to 1550. So this is like I'm brainstorming the calculation for determining when to move up the fretboard or down. If I now have only frets 1 to 14, and I'm just trying to I watch it where the frets go uh, if they transition transition up and down the fretboard and I watch the lead and alt lead I don't know if I like it when the lead and alt lead are on the same focus frets I kind of like a little um, distance um, anyway improved focus frets calculations fingers one to four this is uh, the calculation of like because it's a four-dimensional array, you have to calculate four ahead of you, and you can't go beyond the max, and you can't go below the min, and the first finger always has to be less than the second, and two less than the third, and three less than the fourth. But then you also got these are arrays, so you got to start it with zero. Yeah, it took a lot of time getting the min and max for each four four parameters, but uh, I improved it quite a lot since the last video update. Organized code by chopping down giant functions into functions, calling other functions. Basically, I had a huge giant functions that are hundreds of lines long with a loop nested in a loop and variables, which is fine because it works. But over time, just for easily easier readability, you have to cut it to be more organized. Uh, this is a big one spent almost all day on this uh, next feature. Saving and loading dynamically grabs all variables, currently 171, such as checkboxes, text fields, or sorry, uh, combo boxes, input fields, checkboxes, those three. Those th three int widgets goes up to 171. But let me get back to that. 
saves to file, then when loading, compares all current GUI values to the values which were saved and adjusts any difference to be matching the saved file which is being loaded. So this was fun because I wrote it in a way. There's there's three processes of, of the saving and loading. Save, uh, you have to determine what to save, and that formula determining what to save, it's the same formula as when you're loading, you have to get the current values, and you have to get the values that you're loading. So three different areas, you have to make sure you have your arrays the same length so that they're comparing the same thing, which I had to do some tricky writing to say if the combo box, else if a text input, else if a checkbox, because the combo box has current, get, goes by index, so I have to compare the indexes. I can't compare strings. Text fields, I have to have a certain way to say if you're not a combo box, then maybe you're a check, uh, your input field. By uh, and what's even more interesting is the way I did this is these are all. This combo box has a global name. Each combo box, each input field, each checkbox has a global variable name. And the way I did that was getting all variables in the object. So you could, there's a way to call all the variables as a string format. And you could like get the attributes of that object. And you could turn a string into an executable command. So the way I had to do this was write the, because I, I pass in the variable name as a string, I'd have to write it as a string and then do an exec. So like things like uh, deleting the input field and setting the text, I'd write that as a string and then ex execute it. Because um, I wanted to do this because this is for like, uh, if I ever add any feature checkboxes, combo boxes, or input fields, I won't have to update the save and load formula because the save and load formula just grabs every variable and determines it from there. So there's 171 different variables. There's three different areas that has three different ways of saving and loading. And I have to demonstrate that I made a wacky, um, I made a wacky save that had everything changed and everything unchecked and everything. So I, I could demo that in a minute. Uh, leads into the known issues. When I generate more than one song without closing the app and reopening, I keep adding things required to be cleaned up at each song generation. Lots of config tracking things being updated between multiple files. So I have a config file that multiple files access to the store data to compare. Um, for example, the time signature customization, I had had, a, had another array of um, measures by index and their time signature. So it could be referenced in two different areas. When note adding the note lengths, it has to reference that index uh, and then get, get the time signature to determine how many note lengths to add. So when you're creating the measure that adds to that, to that config uh, array of uh, indexes for each measure that has time signatures, uh, so yeah, I have lots of demo here. Let me start with the, I'll start with the load. So let's put this common C major, 93 BPM. Default, everything's checked here, 1 through 14, strings 1 through 6, lengths. Um, the misc is 6, 1, 4, 2, 6, 5. These are checked. Priority is default, 10, 30, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 15. Times exterior is 4, 4. And just keep a note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load. This is my file, different saves. This one, do GUI extreme. Uh, this one has a lot of things altered, you can see. So it goes exotic, A sharp, Chinese Mongolian, tempo is 33, song title, name, file name, updated, number of measures, 1 from 89 to 44. The frets went from 1 to 14 to 13 to 14. The strings are alone, but the lengths went down. Rhythm, all these frets were checked off. 
Uh, lengths checked off. Patterns, I think that's the same. Out lead. Frets checked off. Lengths checked off. That misc, everything is 24, 24, 24, 24. These are checked off. Or um, not checked off. They were checked off to why they're not. Priorities different than what it was. 44, 46, 38, 78, whatever. Time signature is all now different. 5, 8, 4, 8, 2, 8. So this was just a demo of the load feature. Um, so let me load another another one. Let's try unique. This is another one I found very interesting. So it's every X measures here. Um, it was basically um, every percentage of measures that you want a time signature change. So and right now every 30%. So that calculation is going based off the number of measures. It says, okay, if you're the last update be between this measure and the previous one that was updated time signature bases that is that 30%. And I have this transition, this check. Uh, this check is um, each time you change time signature, if you have this checked off, it's uh, it's in a stay to the most recent set one until a new one comes. Whereas if you don't have it checked off, it's gonna go back to the default right after. So like, if you don't have this checked off, the time sig signature change will only last one measure. Then I'll go back to the default for sure. And then I have this uh, sequentiality, sequential or randomized. Uh, if you haven't randomized, there's a chance for it to dupl duplicate. I fixed that, but I have sequential, so it'll go 4, 4, then 2, 4, then 5, 8, then 4, 16. And um, I can give this as a demo. I just loaded this file. This, uh, yeah, right, this one right here, I loaded this unique D sharp diminished whole. And it showed me all these settings. So I'm going to have the song creator GP file. You'll see all these different versions I've been making ever since. There's so many of them. Thirteen of them. So many different files. But I'm going to generate D sharp diminished whole. And it just generated 442458 four, and all that. So that's right here. Starts off at 4-4, four, four, goes to 2-4. I can do some math here. I did 30%. Uh, okay, which one was it? 89 divided by 30. Every two and a half, every three measures to change. So it was 2-4, every two and three measures. Okay, let's see. Let's see how it sounds. Back to four four, going to two four. Say, let me close and reopen just to be safe. So this file is going to overwrite. You're going to see the time change. Last one was 2 at 2 a.m. Just load the same file. Be sharp, diminished, and let's change sequential to randomized. And we're going to check off the transition so it's going to be one measure only. Updated 204, so the file just updated. Oh, did I change the 30% randomized non-sequential? Oh, never mind, yeah. So it goes back to 44, right, after it changes. So this is, uh, yeah, this is good for Rocksmith. You could do a time signature change. Yeah, 
is so hard. That's true. There's another one I lo saved earlier. I'm, I'm excited for this save and load because you get, sometimes you get a good combination and it may even take two tries to make a good, good uh, song. Just based on the priorities, always be random, really different. Let's try another one. This one I had fun with. Chinese, Mongolian, different time signatures, two, four, three, four, 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 six, eight, twenty percent. Every twenty percent sequentially transition. Default priority, default everything else. See pentatonic moves on the time. Okay, it's a little bit. Oh, look at that. See pentatonic moves. That is a bug. See, there's a problem right here with this uh, exotic because exotic scale is supposed to update this, the uh, the uh, list of scales here. This is a known issue. I tried resolving it when you when like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try again. So that was bugged. It says C, the, the title's there so that since I loaded it, but it's a good thing I caught it. Let's try it again. There we go. It's exotic C Chinese. So this time it'll be correct. Just for a second. See, this is another reason not to release it. A little bug. There's only bugs that I know about. And yeah. Constantly updating this app. This is definitely a Chinese one. This is 2 4, starting at 2 4. Well, it's 3 4, and the transition is keeping it at 3 4 up until the next time. So this is what, 30%? Like 20%? time signatures are created. Okay, so basically the denominator is the note length and the numerator is how many of those note lengths. So the note length is four. Um, what I mean is it takes four quarter notes, one second each. So four four is one four quarter notes. And it gets more complex than that. Can write eight. So this is based on eight notes. Four eights, wouldn't that be what? Two? That's four eights. Yeah, that's two. So you could try whatever. So it's dynamic. So this should work uh, up until an extent. Let's see. What's a crazy time signature? Two sixteen? No. I want like a thirty second. It's okay. Let's try sixteen two. Let's make this reset it. Load and I'm closing it. Let's load the Chinese one. The name loaded correctly, so we're good. Let's try sixteen. Is it? Oh, I didn't have them all. I didn't go up to 16 on purpose, did I? I only went up to like 8. 
I don't want to go too crazy. There's still some calculation to fix. 3.16. No, 3.2. Let's try 3.2. And 7.8. So the, um, I might have to change some settings here, like there's a limit on number of sixteenths and eighths in a measure that could be potentially blocking. Time signature can be reached. All right, two more time signatures. Four sixteen, no, four two. Let's make some wacky ones. Then one more. Eight, eight, no, eight, two. Let's try eight, two, 16 seconds. My goodness. Might break it. So let me save. Wacky time signature test. Teachings browser. Okay. Might, might break, let's see. Did it break? No, actually, it wrote it. Let's see. 211. <laughs> Three, okay, so let's go. 3278. Let's keep this up here. I think that's a good demo for today. Went over all the changes, or at least a uh, quick amount. I'm not showing the code yet. I got the change log open in another window, but it's so much to read. I think I can end it here, but um, can't wait for my new album to come out. Computer generated, 12 songs. You may see this file and see a lot more. You may even see computer generated too, and a lot more. But uh, my first album, Computer Generated, comes out December 21st. And it was written by the 11.6 version. It took two weeks to get there from October 27th-ish. took three days to record. S well, one day, seven songs. Second day, three songs. Third day, two songs. Twelve songs total, 46 minutes. And I'm proud of it. So... That's why I got this computer generated too. Let's see how far we get. Also, I plan on releasing Rocksmith YouTube videos and guitar profiles and Rocksmith files of computer generated uh, on or after December 21st. Just waiting for that release date. And I think I should end the video. We are at 29 minutes. Cut it off before it gets to 30. See you next update. Visit my website, kyleaben.com slash podcast slash song creator dot html. Could be HTTP or HTTPS. It's up to you. Good night. End the video.